Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm destroying a Keurig coffee maker so I can show you what's inside. I'll be completely honest, it's really a pain to get to the fun parts of this project, but once you're inside, there is some really cool stuff. It kind of looks like a weird sci-fi project, but there's plenty to work with for future projects, so stick with me and see what's inside a Keurig. I'm starting with a nice open workspace and a tray to catch any residual water that may be coming out as well as any loose parts that may happen to fall free as I'm working through this. I'm setting all the loose parts aside first and then removing this base from the bottom. It's held in place with a bunch of screws. There are three woven ground wires attached to this base so I'm not pulling it away too far because I don't want to rip those free from where they're attached inside. Once you've got this angle you can see the water pump that's in here and this is the first cool device that we're going to want to get out of here and save for another project. To ensure that I don't damage any of the good stuff, I'm actually just removing any screw that's attached through a device into the base of the unit itself. Anything that actually screws into the body is worth taking off, but I don't want to take anything out that may be holding two pieces of the same part together. If you're working through a process like this yourself, be patient because there are a lot of screws to get out of here, but it is worth it. The one challenge is all of the little clips on the inside that hold the case together. They're really hard to get to and you really need a long, kind of good angled screwdriver to get to them freely so that if you wanted to put it back together, you can, but I'm not that patient. Honestly, this is exactly the point where I wanted to grab a hammer and just smash this thing apart. But I did take a slightly more subtle approach and moved on to actually extracting some other things first like the lift arm and the K-cup holder. Of course, this involves taking out more screws, but be patient because there are plenty more screws to come. The chrome looking handle can actually be removed by a subtle little twisting motion, and after that's done, we can go ahead and open the K-cup lid, or the K-cup armature, so that we can get into the additional screws on the inside and finish taking this thing apart. By the way, this little K-cup holder itself is something that you can salvage and use in another Keurig device if you so need one. Before you can remove the pin that's holding the hinge together, you're actually going to have to take these little E-clips out. You can stick a screwdriver into one of those little open sections and then just pry it out and it will open out freely and then you can slide the pin out to the side. With that, I twisted out the section that holds the K-cup holder itself and then moved on to some more screws. At the very top of where the water reservoir attaches, you see this little rubber or silicone device that points inside. There's actually two spouts in that. One pushes air back that comes out in the form of steam, and one is an overflow spot for some water as it's going through the brewing process. I pushed that back in to get it out of the way, and then moved on to my less subtle approach of getting the case off. Yep, I just started prying it apart, but please be very careful because the edges are sharp and I did find out the hard way. This particular cured coffee maker that I'm taking apart right now was actually somewhat anonymously donated to me. Anonymously because I know who gave it to me, they just don't want me to say who it was. Because it was allowed to be left sitting still with water for a long time and no longer was able to actually pass through clean water. In fact, running some good cleanser through it still doesn't allow it to come through clean. So, we get to take it apart here on camera. I love using magnets and tools that I've made with magnets in them for making projects that I need to keep little parts together on, like these salvage processes. You see this magnet pen below? Well, I made that in a previous video and the link for that is in the description below. In just a few moments we'll be taking these electronic components out, but first we need to get some more stuff out of the way. So back to the top. We've got two screws holding on a switch at the handle mechanism that allows it to know that the handle is locked in place and it can brew your coffee safely. When removing the silicon tubing off of any of the ports, you need to first slide up the little plastic bracket that's holding it in place. You can keep those there and then slide them back down when you want to put things back together. Still working on that brew spout area, you see that there are several pins that are in place holding things together so that it can open and close freely. We're continuing to take all of these out and set them aside to free up more area to work to get out the key electronic components. We've already got one circuit board exposed here, but if we continue to remove screws, we will get to the entire LCD panel and the circuitry that holds that and makes it work. You may have noticed that there's a silicon tube sticking into the back of this particular circuit panel, and we're going to go ahead and take the circuit panel out so that we can get to it because that particular tube is stuck inside or attached to, I should say, a circuit that's used for assessing vacuum pressure. I'm now working my way around what's left of the shell of this and finding any screw that's holding any particular piece of device, appliance, or component to the shell and freeing it up. 
The first parts I'm freeing up are these little 12 volt DC pneumatic solenoid valves. In fact, when you first plug the unit in, you hear a clicking noise? That's these things being pushed to open once they have power. They sit normally closed. These things open and close to allow water to flow in the direction that the microprocessor tells it to. At the bottom now you see me removing this one part that I'm really excited to get out of here. It's a 12 volt DC mini air pump that pushes about 7.7 .7 PSI. This is a great little device that's going to be useful in a future project. The purpose for it in this coffee maker is to create enough pressure to force the hot water when it's ready into the coffee grounds. That's what makes your coffee. After freeing the power transformer, I'm in a great position to go ahead and start working on the two pieces of plastic shell that are the body that surround the heating unit itself. Once that's out of the way, we pretty much have all of our parts separated from the body and shell. As I slowly start to pull the two pieces apart, I do find that the heater itself is still connected to one half of this device with the screws that are coming straight down into that particular piece of plastic holding the heater still trapped. The inset picture, you can see some different probes going into the top of the heater itself. Those each represent a different cup size that you can choose when making your coffee. This is how the brain knows how much water to use when making your cup. Here's a helpful little user tip if you're working on a salvage project like this where you may want to reconnect things when you're done. It's good to get some kind of a marking device that works for you so that you can align how the things should be connected and you can easily identify where to put them back. In fact, it's also very helpful to take pictures as you go. As you can see here, I do still have some pieces of plastic that are left that I want to separate from my parts. In particular, anything that has silicone running through it, I want to go ahead and disconnect the silicone from things like the water pump and pull that back through and then reattach it. That way everything is still kept in place in case, like I said before, I want to put it all back together and make it run without the case in place. Well, I think I've now figured out why it looked like a sci-fi project to me in the beginning, and that's because Keurig, in their infinite wisdom in making these devices, uses a lot of wire and tubes and things and makes it seem rather complicated, all of which results in the same thing that I hate doing, and that's untangling a lot of wires. But when all is said and done, you see I have a lot of great salvaged parts here that I can use in future projects. In fact, as I was taking this apart, I was coming up with a lot of ideas for projects and have a list already exceeding a dozen items. So look forward to those in some future videos too. For easier reference, I've put a more detailed list of some of the key items that I have salvaged out of this project in the description below. In fact, this little water heater that comes with this is actually a really unique device in and of itself, which may warrant a video all of its own. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.